First of all, I would like to thank uh, to the organizers uh, for giving the opportunity to me to present here. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, secondly, I have to mention and I have to tell you that yesterday was a very interesting day because it turned out you, that, that you, you have already touched upon all of the most important issues about uh, climate change and, uh, and uh, energy uh, subjects in, in South Euro Southeast European uh, region. So, so basically what I, what I have to do and what I'm going to do is uh, a little bit restructuring your, your thoughts and ideas, but most of them will be familiar uh, to you. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm trying to be short. I'm going to speak about three main issues, reflecting and responding the, the issues or subject that has been raised up uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, the first one is a typical greenhouse gas emission sources in the region, <coughs> because that's, that's one of the main, main reason for climate change. Uh, the second is um, a kind of financial subject, which is about um, a little bit bad use of money in this region uh, in order to, uh, uh, to, to battle or fight against climate change. And the third one is um, typical, <coughs> sorry, typical trade-offs in, <coughs> in the whole system, uh, which are always present actually uh, everywhere. Oh, okay. Okay. Thanks. So I'm going to <coughs> start with this. This is a figure about uh, from from Munich. Yeah. Munich yeah, is uh, is the biggest or one of the biggest reinsurer uh, company or institutes in the world. So it has it is investing in clean technologies, renewable technologies, and one of the main strategic focal points or direction of Munich yeah, is uh, is climate change. So uh, this company or institute has the biggest uh, database on climate change disasters and risks worldwide. And this shows uh, a growing or increasing number of national catastrophes uh, in the last couple of decades. So uh, it's, quite, it's quite interesting to, to use their websites and, uh, uh, and to use their data. And the point is that um, if we only if we take the top 10 natural catastrophes worldwide, worldwide, only the top 10 in 2011, it turns out that um, this, is, uh, uh, this is a huge amount of money because climate change means, means losses and the losses means huge amount of money which is minus earthquakes or tsunamis it's even more than 1 billion uh, US, uh, oh, sorry, 100 billion US dollars only uh, during a year, only the top 10 catastrophes. Yeah. <coughs> um, this is a figure from WWF, a uh, very famous and popular report. It is called Living Planet Report. It is published every two years and um, it shows uh, that uh, different countries have different footprints. It's basically um, a supply and demand analysis of the world, worldwide. You can find every country on the figure uh, and you can, you can see and you can see that how much uh, nature resources they are using basically every year. So if you uh, unfortunately, there are no um, all of the countries that you are interested in, but basically there is Macedonia, there is Croatia, there, and there is Serbia, and the red line is the world average. The, so it means that uh, in these countries uh, you can find and you can see how much carbon, how much cropland, how much uh, grassland, how much forest, uh, and etc. So how much natural resources do you need? to make a living. So what is your demand in your countries? Which is uh, the, the basic conclusion that it's uh, still quite high uh, all in all of these countries. <clears throat> if, you get closer, if you get closer to your countries in the region, the main, uh, um, one of the main reasons, most important reasons is uh, CO2, uh, carbon dioxide emissions. 
from different sectors. And I have found some, some interesting data about these. <clears throat> There's also Hungary and Austria just to compare. And uh, it turns out you can see that on the, on the, col on the columns uh, 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 the fact that where the main CO2 emission uh, comes from. So the, green, so the green part of the columns is energy, uh, electricity and heat, basically. So in case of uh, Macedonia, Serbia, uh, definitely if you want to uh, reduce carbon, you have to focus not only or, on, on transport or, or buildings first, but first uh, focus on uh, energy industry electricity and heating production, because that's 70, that's around 70%. And uh, in other countries like uh, in Croatia, the main emission source is, is transport sector or the industrial sector. Uh, in total, in, 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 this is the same figure actually, but with, uh, with, but with million tons per year, and it's, uh, it's basically quite impressive. And uh, yesterday you have mentioned, and also this morning you have mentioned, mentioned health problems and reasons for health problems and pollutions and so on. So if just we, we take out the, the emissions and pollutions of electricity production, uh, these are the consequences. For instance, in case of uh, Macedonia and Serbia, the, the, it's quite carbon intensive electricity, electricity production is going on. Which, which, causing, which is causing continuously health problems and uh, CO2 emissions and also water po pollution problems by heating and, and quality pollution as well. Um, if, you take, if, 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 we, if we look at the, if you look at the total losses in the electricity grid, the red line is the, is the basically the EU, or no, the world, world average, which is uh, a little bit less than 10%. And um, uh, what you can see that in case of uh, every country, the losses in the electricity network and the electricity grid is quite high. Uh, and that, that should be also another focus uh, point in the energy, <coughs> in the energy sector. Uh, comparing the countries in re regarding comparing the countries regarding the um, total primary energy supply, it turns out that um, basically in three words it's coal, oil, and gas. Uh, wherever uh, wherever we are, uh, uh, in in a, in every country. <coughs> and um, another hot issue is the, uh, the dependency on import. Uh, if you take coal, uh, Croatia, and, uh, basically Croatia in, in case of oil, uh, it's Macedonia, in case of gas, it's, 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 uh, it's also Macedonia and Serbia, it's quite close to the full uh, dependency on import fossil fuels, which is not only a nature conservation or an environmental problem, but possibly in future it's a, it's a price, uh, pricing problem as well. Um, this is a um, very typical energy characteristics uh, that can be uh, that, that we can use. Usually, it's uh, energy intensity, which shows that how much energy you use actually to produce uh, a unit of value or, or, or something, which is also quite high. Uh, the the EU average is around 0 0.10, which uh, which is uh, quite low. Um, and um, basically, it's it's the same with uh, with carbon intensity in case of uh, in case of energy energy production in the countries. <coughs> so, if you try to compare the countries with each other, and if we take the import dependency and the uh, carbon emission, um, maybe there can be two groups of the countries. For instance, uh, uh, from the South Europe, the Southeast European region, Croatia has, ha has high import dependency, uh, but low, but basically comparatively low uh, uh, CO2 emission. So the, the direction is 
quite obvious, obvious. And the other group is, for instance, with Macedonia and Serbia, is uh, where the where the CO2 emission is higher, and maybe the import dependency is a little bit lower. The the, the obvious direction in the in the near future to lower the the emission sources. Um, and if if we if you look at the uh, renewables and uh, comparatively the, uh, the other energy sources and the costs, um, now it's, it's getting, it's, it's, it's getting uh, closer, we are getting closer to the point where uh, the renewable energy sources, so the cost of the, uh, uh, the energy production from renewable energy sources, it's, it's getting closer to the fossil sources. So if we, if you take, uh, if you take the, for instance, small hydropower plant or onshore wind or landfill gas, uh, the cost of energy production is 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 getting closer to the fossil. So it's it's not uh, true uh, anymore that the renewable energy is always always and always uh, too expensive to invest. Um, if you if you uh, if you have a look at the financial supports that you can you can have if you are an investor and if you can if you want to invest in renewable energy in the southeast european countries uh, the, the the basic is that uh, you can have financial support it's, and it's not so bad so the red line is the german uh, photovoltaic subsidy financial support uh, this year and in case of croatia macedonia and serbia you have you can have <coughs> quite good uh, financial support if you want to invest in renewable energy in case of solar or whatever. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, these are just two examples that um, more money in the system doesn't really mean more renewables in the system. So in case of uh, Croatia, uh, for instance, uh, there is a high wind cap a relatively high wind capacity in the energy production, but the but the average financial support is not higher than in the other countries. And if we if we take the hydropower capacity in these countries, it turns out that in case of Macedonia, it's it's, it's quite relatively high in the region, and the the average financial support it's it's not low, it's not higher than than in the other countries. So basically, more financial support, there's, it, it's, it's, it doesn't mean more renewables, because uh, there are so many other tools to make it easier for the investors or, or to anyone to enter the renewable energy markets, not only. So basically, you don't need to spend too much money on renewable. <coughs> Another financial issue. Uh, these are the big funds that are available worldwide and uh, in Europe. European, in Europe, uh, European Investment Bank, Global Environment Facility, the European Bank of, uh, for Reconstruction and Development, and the KFV, which is a, which is a, which is a bank. Uh, so these are the places where the, where the money comes from, and you need you need money from for different reasons. So basically. Uh, we have found some data uh, about uh, how you use money in the region from these uh, financial sources. And uh, basically, uh, there are everywhere available funds in, different, in, in these countries, in Montenegro, in Macedonia, in Serbia, and Croatia. And the point is that you have used, you used in the last five years, almost nine, uh, 9 billion euros uh, for energy, you know, basically for energy uh, purposes, in energy projects. And uh, the point is that uh, almost 50% of these financial supports, lands or whatever, uh, was spent in, in, uh, in coal and, um, and, nat and, natural, and natural gas uh, areas. So basically, it's it's around uh, nine and a half or nine billion euros that you have spent in these areas. Also, financial support is going to hydro, hydropower, uh, wind power, and grid improvements and development. 
but not really in, uh, not really in the energy efficiency and uh, for instance not really in biomass projects and not really in, in, in solar uh, projects. And um, finally about some trade-offs in the system that I've heard yesterday here and you're basically, uh, of course you are familiar with all of them but to enhance because it's, these are always issues in the, in the future in every EU countries and in everywhere. Uh, renewables or fossil fuels. You cannot you cannot spend the same money on these two uh, uh, on these two subjects. I mean, uh, you have to choose because otherwise, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise, it's, there's no there's no enough money. So, renewables or fossil fuels. You have to choose actually. Hydropower or ecosystem. <coughs> Basically, you have quite high hydropower potential and hydropower. Uh, capacity, uh, but you have quite valuable ecosystems, and you have a, all of you have a beautiful country. And um, if you if you increase the hydropower capacity in the system, it means that uh, your ecosystem services will be decreasing. Uh, so that there is a loss in ecosystem services, which means that lower income from fishing, lower income from 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 ecotourism. Or, or, or more problems in drinking water and, every, and uh, everywhere. Irrigation and fresh water. We have, we have heard yesterday that uh, you, are, you are thinking about uh, improving uh, irrigation systems. If it means transferring uh, water in long distances, um, I think it's, uh, 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 it's, you have problems with the availability of fresh water resources. So it's resource efficiency problems. It's, uh, it's always happening in different countries, but uh, if you predict that you will have uh, less rainfall and uh, you will have re less groundwater resources, don't think about uh, improving uh, irrigation system. I mean, uh, I mean quant quantity and not quality. So not the efficiency, I'm not talking about the fi efficiency. <coughs> and biomass, and uh, with biomass you will, you are going to face, it's, so biomass is, uh, is not a silver bullet. Uh, you cannot solve anything, everything uh, with biomass. Um, and especially, you, do, and, and, um, you, you don't really use uh, biomass so far or at this moment. So if you, if you want to increase it really and strongly, you are going to face with a lot of problems. Uh, and one of them is land use problems with forests, with, with ecosystems, with protected areas, and with everything. So these are, the, these are just a, a handful of trade-offs uh, that should be kept in mind in the near future and, uh, and, 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 and get back to the point all the time. Um, yeah, basically this is. Thank you very much. Sorry for it. Sorry for it.